Hi folks, I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. Uh, in our Discord chat, which is uh, exclusive to Patreons, if you are interested in joining that, you can join from as little as $2 a month. Uh, it's down in the description, the link for that, so please do check that out. Uh, but we were chatting last night about airbrushing and some of the frustrations that people are having around sort of it clogging, around it not working very well, having to constantly clean it, and that it's not the time saver I think that people thought that it was. Now, I, I had all of these same struggles as well as I was going through my kind of learning curve with airbrushing, uh, and I feel like I've kind of come out of the other side now. I'm not an expert painter with the airbrush, but I feel I can do a lot of the basics. I can do highlighting and kind of all the different things I need to do with it. I'm getting better with the skills, but I certainly don't have the issues with the clogging and and that kind of stuff now. So what I said I'd do is I would give a, a reasonably quick video. Um, I think what I'll show you in this one is I'll show you how to make sure that your airbrush is clean and make sure it's in a good condition to start with. And then I'll do a follow-up video straight after this one that'll show you basically how to kind of, to mix your paints and, and set your air pressures and things. Because I think if you're having problems, making sure it's clean, is sometimes 90% of the issue. So without further ado, let's go down and I'll show you the airbrushes that I've got uh, and we'll get started. So as I explained, these are the two airbrushes that I have. This is the one I started with and, and still use um, very, very often. This was part of a kit that I bought uh, from Amazon, which was essentially basically the, um, the compressor, uh, the hose, some quick connector couplings, um, and, and this particular airbrush as well. And a lot of people will tell you that cheap airbrushes are not very good. Um, I think they're very hit and miss. Um, however, the one that I got was particularly pretty good. And then this is one that I bought when I thought I wanted to kind of upgrade a little bit. This one is the, the Harder and Steinbeck Cult of Paint Evolution. Uh, and I'll come on to why I think sometimes it's worth spending a little bit extra in a second. But I think most people will have something along these lines. So let's move that one out of the way. It is actually break, breaks down into a few different parts. We have the main cup here as well. So the gravity fed cup from the top. There's a lid on that. If you do use the lid when you're painting, just make sure, you might be able to see there, that that tiny little hole in the top, make sure that that is clean, as, as otherwise what happens is if that's blocked, as the, um, the paint level drops inside the cup, you can't get any air in to replace that, so it basically creates a blockage. So first of all, make sure that little pinhole in the top of that lid is clean if you're using that. Uh, next of all, obviously you've got the main, the main cup itself, you have the trigger, which basically is, this is a dual action airbrush. So you can push down for air to come out. What that essentially does is it releases um, a mechanism inside the handle here, uh, inside the, the connector part, which then lets the air come through. The air blows along this path, uh, this passage at the bottom here and comes out of the end. Um, and then basically as we push down or as we pull back, what that does is it controls the needle that's inside and it pulls the needle back which allows the paint to flow and it creates like a vent, what's called a venturi effect. So as the air blows past, it pulls the air, uh, sorry, as the air blows past, it pulls the paint with it and that's what um, creates the air coming out. And that's why you can control the amount of air coming through by the pressure on the, on the trigger and you can control the amount of paint by how far you pull that back. Now, uh, I'll break it down. So this is how you would clean it and, and this will explain to you kind of what the setup is as well. It's basically, what we have is we have basically like a handle uh, at the end here, which just normally screws off. You also have a nut here, which you will loosen, and then you can pull the needle out. And we just want to make sure that that needle is nice and clean. I'll try and see if I can get a little bit closer for that as well, so you can see. Make sure it's not bent, make sure it's not damaged, uh, and make sure it's nice and clean. I'm gonna pop that back inside, because I want to show you um, if I can just fiddle around, get that in there, and show you basically what's at this end, because this is protecting it. So this little part, this first part at the end, is basically the, um, the needle protector. So if you were to drop your airbrush, it basically protects the needle from getting damaged. The finer the needle for, for sort of high detail work, um, the more susceptible they are to being damaged. So if we screw off this first little part, and put that down, you can see, if I can get that to focus, you can see the needle sticking out. And as I pull that trigger back, you can see the needle moving in and out. Um, so what will happen basically, as you're painting for a period of time, um, you're basically blowing air across here and paint is coming out. I tend to find that if I'm just very lightly doing it, not really pulling the, the trigger back very much, just very gently doing it, 
you tend to get a, a buildup of paint on here, which also known as a, like a dry tip. Now, let me put this back on just a bit more comfy to hold it while we're talking. Um, so what you will kind of find if you start to get a little bit of spattering or you feel that like it's blocked and it's not blowing, uh, it's not kind of like brushing uh, or, or, or blowing correctly, this is the first thing to check. Now you can just kind of get in there with your nail and just kind of scrape it off. What I like to do is to try and make sure that we're not damaging that and we're also not spiking ourselves because these are extremely sharp, is I tend to just use a cotton swab or a cotton bud or a Q-tip, whatever you call them in your region. Um, airbrush cleaner I've got here, you can also use a, a isopropanol alcohol as well, but we'll do exactly the same job. And I tend to just get, I've put some in a little dropper bottle just because it's easier to use. And I tend to just put a little bit onto the, the end of there. And then I will just wipe around the edge, making sure that it's all removed. Now, what, what, what I would say is if, you, if you're in the, in the middle of doing a project, if you like, do not take out the needle while you've got paint still in the cup because it will start to pour out. You'll thank me later. Um, <laughs> and those of you who have already done that will already be thinking, yep, yeah, don't do that. So just, uh, just clean that off, basically. You'll be cleaning on the edge of the airbrush there as well. Let me just bring it up. You'll be cleaning around the edge there where both the air and the paint will come out. And you wanna make sure that that is nice and clean. So that is when you're kind of in the middle um, of airbrushing. That is likely to be the issue. Now you can take this guard off and you can airbrush quite nicely without it. It actually gives you the opportunity to kind of see if that's building up uh, and, and you'll be able to check it more regularly. Obviously as the guard is on, it's going to become more difficult to kind of check that uh, on the fly, but you are susceptible to damaging the needle if you leave that off. So if you're just quite new to it, I would suggest just uh, just doing it on the fly, basically, and just, just keeping an eye on it and checking it. The next bit is if you want to break this down to give it a really good clean, if, if that doesn't work, if that's not the issue, and you're still getting that kind of spattering or you're, or you're getting a complete blockage, the chances are it's actually in here in the nozzle part. So what we will do is screw off the handle, Move that over there, unscrew that nut, that nut, the locking nut in there, pull out the needle. Again, just put it somewhere safe so it doesn't get damaged. Screw off the protective cap. And then there's basically, there's another part here that you will then screw off. And again, you will now see that there's a nozzle inside. Which you'll be able to see there, and we'll come on to that in a second. And then basically this cup is going to, again, take your Q-tip, Take your air cotton board with a little bit of your air cleaner on and just make sure that this is nice and clean in here. You should be able to, and I don't know if you can see on camera, but there is a tiny little hole, obviously, which the, the, the needle comes through. You want to make sure that it's nice and clean and you can see all the way through there. And again, there's no buildup of paint on the inside. I think you can just kind of see it. As I move that around, you can kind of see as I come over the top of the Q-tip, you can see the, the white part there. So that needs to be nice and clean. The next part and the bit that some people will tell you not to do or be very careful with is the nozzle part itself. Now, if you've got an airbrush like this, you will have got one of these very small spanners. And what you can do is very gently just pop it onto the end and anti-clockwise basically to turn it and unlock it. And then this will screw out. Now, these are really fiddly and they're dead easy to lose. So do this over a top of a tree or something or where you won't lose it. Now these are susceptible to really, to really badly blocking up. Now what I tend to do, you can either, if you uh, if you don't, if you kind of have an old needle or something, you can use the needle to get in. Let me just try and, to get in there. You can see the, the the needle coming out of the end there. You can get the needle to get in there and clean it. If you've got an old one, I wouldn't suggest using a good one. The other thing you can do is I've just taken like a cocktail stick or a toothpick, just use my hobby knife just to sharpen it to a nice point and you can get inside there and basically like sort of scrape and clean that out. You don't want to push too far and damage the end, but you do want to get in there and make sure that there's no, I'm just twisting it here in my finger, making sure that there's no gunk, no built up pit inside. Because I've found in the past, this was something I was neglecting and, and, and even though I thought I'd cleaned it by pushing airbrush cleaner through it, it sometimes wasn't enough, it gets caked on there. I use quite a bit of ghost gray primer from Vallejo and uh, airbrush primer it is. And I tend to find it's quite rubbery and it, it does seem to stick in here quite a lot. So once you've cleaned out that, 
You can put it, pop it in some cleaner overnight. If you can use it, if you've got an ultrasonic cleaner, even better. But this is the part that is absolutely critical to make sure it's clean. The other part is to make sure that actually through the head and through the main body of the brush is clean. Now you can, the easiest way I found is to use the, the, the back end of the needle, the not sharp part, and just push it through. And then you can see inside the cup there where it's coming through. If anything gets kind of pushed through into the cup, just make sure you clean it out, get your cotton bud, give it a wipe, sort of give it a tap and get it out. But in theory, everything you've done now should be absolutely clean. It's clean from the cup coming down into the reservoir at the bottom. It's clean all the way through the body of the brush. It's now clean in the nozzle as well. So we're gonna replace the nozzle in this. And this is the bit where you can, if you're not careful, um, of course I'm obviously gonna be all fiddling, fin um, fingers and thumbs on camera now, aren't I? That's it. Um, you just screw that back in until it's kind of finger tight. Then what I would suggest is you take the spanner and turn it until it stops itself. Let me try not to do it kind of so I'm covering it over. So you just turn it until th that, that's kind of tight now. Just give it a very slight sort of nip up. Do not over tighten it because if you strip the threads in there, your airbrush is wasted. You might as well put in the bin at that point. This is the point where people tell you not to take this nozzle out because you are very likely to strip the threads on that. But as long as you're very careful, you will be fine. Um, next, I'm gonna show you in this order because I want to explain what happens here and how the airbrush actually works. As you put the needle in, now that that is nice and clean, keep pushing it and you will see the pin. You just saw it there, I'll just, I'll probably zoom in or something at this point if I can go in and edit it back. You'll see the pin comes out. Now at some point you're gonna get um, the kind of taper of the, of the needle hitting inside the taper of the nozzle. So you get that kind of metal against metal. And that is what is sealing the paint from coming out of there. At that point, tighten up that nut. Because that's the point where you are. You have a nice clean seal, it's completely blocked. And then as you pull back your trigger during, actually, during using the, the um, airbrush, you'll get a nice flow of paint coming around that needle and the air will basically come out of the area around the needle, which will then pull it through and give you that nice fine mist of paint. So if you've tightened that up as, as that needle is up against the end of the nozzle, you're in a good shape. You can pop the handle part back on now. Now just be careful with these as you put them back on. So first of all, you put the, I don't even know what you call that really, just kind of like the nozzle onto the end there, I suppose. And just that only really needs to be finger tight. There's no tools to tighten up or anything like that. And then you put the guard back on again. Once uh, get the thread back there, that's it. And again, just should be just finger tight. And that should be completely sealed now. That should be completely clean rather. So what you can do is you can pop some water through, you can put some cleaner through just to test it. I'll show you that kind of stuff when I come on to um, sort of make, get, getting it set up and stuff with the air pressures and things. But that in theory should be absolutely clean now. Now the other brush I've got, and one of the reasons why I think sometimes it's potentially worth spending a little bit extra. Um, this one basically has the same, the same cap, the nice Cult of Paint logo on that as well. Um, this one, the actual, the cup itself screws off. Now you can buy different size cups, smaller ones and bigger ones, but it makes it much easier to clean the cup. Let me put all the bits on camera so you can see them all as well. Um, you can then get right into here. It's much easier to clean in here and make sure that that's clean. Then the guard on this one, the protector for the pin, uh, for the needle rather, just comes off. And actually this one as well, you'll be able to see if I put it back on. For all it is protecting me, so if I was to drop it, it's still protecting the pin. You can actually see the pin showing through it. So you can see if you're starting to get that dry tip. So the, the protector comes off. And this one is in two parts. If I take it off from the the bot where the, the sort of the rubber handle is, if I unscrew that and pull it out, the whole needle comes out with the handle. And if I put that down, it's actually spring loaded in there. So what will happen is that as I push that back in till it reaches the end, it will basically put pressure on it. It, it will never kind of, um, it, it won't get forced because there's some kind of given that. Um, if I was to take off the back end of this one, You'll see it's got exactly the same setup as the other one where I can loosen that and I can reset the, the needle. And we'll do that when we put it back together. 
Now the beauty of this one is not only actually very nicely has it got a, a trigger that is can be removed and turned around as well, whether you're left-handed or right-handed. So that one I'm obviously right-handed, it rests nice on my finger. But this one basically just screws out by hand like the other one, but rather than having to use that little spanner tool that we had before, the nozzle on this one is just a separate part. And again, you can get in there. There's no chance of you stripping any threads or anything like that. Um, and you can just get in there and again, clean it out and make sure that it's nice and clean it inside. You can kind of see there as a, it's just picking up with like little bits on the end there. And again, just, just go in and make sure it is all nice and clean. You can see, actually, even, even with that, you can still see bits of paint that are coming off. So it just shows you how critical that is. So to put, this, put it together again, that nozzle drops back into there. That bit just screws back on. What we'll do is we'll pop the needle through now and I'll screw that bit on. This bit's loose. So we'll push it through until the needle kind of hits that hard end there. Uh, just try that as well. Let's make sure that that's, that's coming back nice and free. And then if I can find it, there it is. Pop that back on, put the guard back on put the cuff back on and again remembering the little pinhole is where is there as well to make sure that's nice and clean and that is essentially it if you've done that on both on either type of these brushes they should be in perfect condition a good standard condition to start setting up your airbrush to make sure that um, you're, you're sort of starting from the right position if you've got any problems now the problems will be linked to either the the viscosity of the paint how thick or how thin you've mixed it or the air pressure on your um, compressor. So hopefully that's helped one or two of you, you, you especially Tony Howell, who asked the question last night. I hope it's helped one or two others as well. And um, if you have any other questions about airbrushing, again, I'm, I'm not a pro painter with an airbrush, but I know enough to be able to strip them down, to clean them, to get them back together, and to kind of troubleshoot shoot some issues. So again, any questions you've got, please do drop them down in the comments. Uh, I'll also link um, up here as well, I'll link here. This will be the, the next video, which I'll record straight away and upload them both together. And this one I'll show you basically how to set up from scratch um, with the compressor, what kind of air pressures to use and how to thin your paints down and get them flowing nice in there and go through there. And also if we even just put some water through, you'll be able to see where, how it should look when the airbrush is nice and clean. So thanks for watching this. Catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching my video. I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon where you can pledge in support from as little as $2 a month. And there is lots of different tiers and bonuses, which will give you access to a private Discord server. It will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month, and a number of other things, including getting your name at the end of every video, like these awesome folks who already support me now.